nice car. What's the retail on one of those? More than you can afford, pal. Ferrari. Smoke. Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and this is the 2022 Toyota Supra 2.0 with a two liter turbocharged four under the hood, not the inline six that everyone knows the Supra for. This cheaper model is definitely not one to sleep on and has plenty of amazing stats that completely shocked me after spending a week with this one. So I encourage you not to believe everything you read on the internet, just what you hear in this video. Starting under the hood of the 2.0 Supra, you get, you guessed it, a two liter turbocharged four cylinder, making a 255 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque, made it to an eight speed automatic, routing all power to those rear wheels. Being that this is built for an inline six, there is actually a comical amount of room in front of this little four cylinder for the missing two cylinders. And yes, I will go ahead and get the elephant out of the room now. This is essentially a BMW. This Supra was built in conjunction with BMW and that is not a bad thing. A lot of what makes this a really great car comes down to the partnership of Toyota and BMW. This car would not exist if it were not for that partnership because developing a two-door, two-seat sports car is rather expensive and the partnership between the German BMW and Japanese Toyota has produced a very epic sports car. We've done a fake or functional here on the channel before and never has it been more prevalent and needing to be done than here on the Supra. You can see under the headlights here, that is not a functional air curtain to get air around the front corner. It is completely blocked off hard plastic as is a majority of this side here. You have not a lot of functional air ducts up there. And then this spot here on the hood looks great from behind the wheel, but as you can see, completely closed off, not functional. Speaking of uh, the two door platform, both doors have this, what looks to be tacked on. You can actually see the seam here, piece of plastic with this fake side vent going down the entire side right here. Also not functional, unfortunately. And then moving back here to the back, we've got some more dripping down from the taillights back there. See if I can get yeah, right there. Uh, also closed off, not functional, but in the grand scheme of things, oh, just, just look at that booty. Look at that, that's nice and shiny. This right here is the best view on the entire car. These rear fenders that can be seen from both rear view mirrors out behind you are so sculpted, so round and so in your face that this car really demands attention when driving down the road. You add on to it this built in rear spoiler and just the overall compact dimensions. This truly is an amazing vehicle from this angle. And it is actually quite practical as well. We've got the key fob here to open up the rear hatch. While there are cars with more rear interior space, being that this is a hatchback, you do actually get large access to very square uh, load floor back here in the back. You do get a hard parcel shelf that covers it all. And it does actually pass all the way through into the cabin. Very practical two-seat sports car if there ever was one. 
Now, before I hop inside this one, one more thing I will give Toyota designers credit for is the fact that there really isn't much on the exterior to let people know that you don't have the three liter. You do get 18 inch wheels versus the 19 inch wheels on the three liter uh, version, but you do get staggered width. So you get 255.40 up front, 275.40 in the rear, and even these wheels don't look that bad, but they aren't the 19 inch wheels that you get on the three liter. It's hot outside. Let's get inside and see how this red hot car performs. Sitting in the Toyota Supra, you are definitely in a cockpit. The seats hug you and hold you in place like a dream. These are truly excellent, supportive racing seats and I, I love them. Uh, they hold you in place. It is tight. I am 5'10". I've got a little bit of headroom. I can say, again, from experience, the cutouts and the roofline here for wearing a helmet absolutely come in handy uh, because taking that 3 liter out on the track, we did have to wear a helmet. This one, being a 2 liter, has manually adjustable seats. So you do skimp on some things in favor of the luxury, but it does have power lumbar, so that's a big plus. Very much a BMW interior, does not feel familiar to any Toyota owners, except for maybe that Toyota badge there on the steering wheel cover that covers the horn, but I'll, I'll just leave that alone. You do have a very prominent tack, that is digital surrounded by some helper screens not a lot of useful everyday information you do get your current speed and the posted speed there on the left a lot of wasted space on the right of the gauge cluster do get wireless apple carplay with a usable interface it's it's not the best but it is by far not the worst and because you do have an eight speed automatic you do get this gear selector button on the side pull for drive, push for reverse, push the button right there for park. Just be sure not to hit the joystick in and of itself. Sport mode, parking sensors, traction control, safety system, electronic parking brake, joystick for the controls up here. All very easy to access, all within hands reach. And the visibility, even though the windows are very small in this, you can see out rather well all the way around you. The sloping roof line of the hatch back there really kind of cuts into my over the shoulder visibility on my right, but otherwise excellent visibility out of what seems to be a very cramped interior. But I've got plenty of room. The seat does go further back. Taller drivers with longer legs could fit in here. I don't know about torsos, but again, just crank the seat down a little bit. Uh, I, I, I believe just over six foot could fit in here just fine. Putting it into drive and setting off, you hear that two liter and the exhaust back behind you. And this is perhaps one of the best sounding four cylinders that I have driven here on the channel. Sure, I, I, I am almost positive some of it is augmented in here. Uh, but you do get a good soundtrack here inside. Push the sport button, turn off traction control, and this thing will step the tail out and let you have a little bit of fun in it. And it will scoot more than that 255 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque number would lead you to believe. And that's why I said in the intro, don't believe everything you read online. Me as a lifelong gearhead would look at the specs on this vehicle and compare it to the three liter and be like, why wouldn't you spend the seven, eight grand more and get the three liter? Well, after living with this two liter for a week, I can say this powertrain, this chassis, this steering, the entire package is so good. I, I don't know how to fully convey to you through the camera 
just how good this platform is. You really have to get in and get behind the wheel yourself. It is as much a street legal grown up go-kart that you will ever get. And again, putting it into sport mode will let you have a little fun with the dip of the throttle. That does hold the gears even longer to keep you in the power band, but you do get flappy paddles on the back of the steering wheel if you want to row through the gears yourself. Toyota has shown us that a six-speed manual version of the Supra is coming, but for everyday livability and in this two-liter model, I've got the automatic. Talking about the steering and the ride on this vehicle. My first introduction to this vehicle was driving it back two hours on the interstate from Dallas. And I can say more than enough power, more than enough visibility, and more than enough just get up and go to navigate Dallas heavy afternoon traffic and did not kill me on the two hour drive home talked about how supportive these seats were they do not get tiring they do not wear you out the stiff suspension on this vehicle is not rough it does not beat you up when the road surfaces get less than perfect my wife and i will drive this on the historic brick streets in downtown tyler for you to see just how composed this vehicle really is on rough pavement i cannot ignore the fact that now this vehicle has a rival in the 2023 Nissan Z and its rebirth. For $40,000 essentially you get a twin turbocharged V6 making 400 horsepower to the rear wheels in that Nissan Z which definitely outpaces this $48,000 2 liter model with its 255, 295 power numbers. And again, on paper, you would be a fool to even shop this. But this platform that was co-developed with BMW is so good that I don't see how that decades old Nissan can even begin to compete with this when the roads get curvy. Sure, it was a competent platform back in the day, but this is a truly modern sports car platform and will let you have a lot of fun when the roads get curvy. The turn in on this is so spectacular and the overall size and proportions of this vehicle allow you just to put it where you want it. You, you really just have to think what direction you want this car to go and it goes. And with that long hood that they had to make for the straight six in the three liter model, you really get a lot of runway out in front of you to see just exactly what it is uh, that you're looking at and what corner you're looking to point around. But this thing takes corners with confidence. And with those Michelin Super Sport tires uh, wrapping all four, uh, all four corners of this vehicle, you can be sure that the traction will stick and that you can take those corners with some speed. This has been an unbelievably fun car for daily life. Sure, me as a gearhead, I would absolutely love to have the three liter over this two liter. And I honestly thought this two liter would be a joke, but after spending a week in it, I absolutely love it. It is a hoot of a platform. Both my brother and my parents have both said, why on earth would you even need that three liter other than the additional fun? This thing truly is a blast. Yeah, this thing is an absolute go-kart and will have you taking corners much faster than many other cars. Uh, I can't think of a better tuned chassis, steering, suspension, everything that I have driven here at speed on my home turf than the Supra. On paper, 
it really appears to be a joke when compared to its competition or its more powerful siblings. But in reality, this ain't nothing to sleep on. And one last thing, I did promise you a surprising stat. It is something that I couldn't find anywhere on the window sticker, and that is the fuel economy of this vehicle. I was floored that this got 44 mpg on the highway in real life heading back from dallas in 100 degree temperatures with the ac on this really is a performance vehicle for the modern age it is more than enough fun hugs the corners scoots with the best of them and sips the fuel granted since getting it back to Tyler, we've had just a little bit more spirited driving with it, and we have been um, letting it idle while we hook up the film equipment and such, but dropping it down here to the trip computer, you can see average speed, 30 miles an hour, fuel economy, 27.4, and the nearly 200 miles that I have put on this car. It is truly surprising how efficient this vehicle was. I kid you not, I was getting 44 mpg at 75 miles per hour, and this thing just absolutely surprised me in that fact. Do a quick real world U turn test just to see how tight the turn circle is, and it is tight. Two lanes! Two lanes is all you need to make a full U-turn in this. I'd be remiss if I didn't do a quick acceleration test. So, we are in sport. We've got traction control on, but we are gonna drop that off. Full stop, engine brake, and go! Oh my goodness! Oh, yes, this thing will go! Woo! Yeah! <laughs> that little two liter is putting in the work and that eight speed transmission makes for quick shifts that give you a little kick in the pants. It's a fun little experience all the way around and has left me smiling every time I get behind the wheel. Now, if you wanna know a little bit more of the practicality of this vehicle and how it would work for a family, namely my family of three with my wife Holly, well, be sure and hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell so you are notified when our family review drops later this week. Well, there you have it, GearHeads, a completely practical two-door, two-seat sports car from Toyota. This thing really has blown me away in my week of owning it. I told you how much I loved that three liter that I drove on the track, but this really is just enough and then some for everyday use. The chassis and steering are superb in this, and that two liter turbo four is no slouch whatsoever. The looks on this thing turns heads wherever it goes, and don't even get me started on the surprising fuel economy of this one. Yes, this is a practical sports car for the modern era. If you wanna get one of these, head over to your local Toyota dealership and snatch one up. I highly recommend it. For all intents and purposes, as much. Starting under the hood of this two liter Supra. Starting under the hood of this two liter Supra. I'm gonna get it right here sooner or later. <laughs> this really is a fun car all the way around. And you would have to be dead inside not to have a smile on your face getting behind the wheel and turning into a corner. Ah, oh, these trucks are ruining my fun.